everyone. I'm so excited to tell you about this podcast. It's called The DK Project, but it's really The Darren Show. So thanks for tuning in. You're going to want to sit back, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Let's go! Welcome back. Boy, a long holiday break, man. We rolled. Yes. We, uh, we're rolling into uh, numero 56. Wow. Can you say that in Spanish for our Spanish listeners? How many, how many, no whenever you ask somebody cinco. to say a, a numeral cinco in Spanish, seis. they all do that. Cinco seis. No, I think there's like real words. Like I'm going with cinco seis. Okay. Cinco seis. We're going with five six. We're taking the T out. Cincuenta y seis. Your Spanish numeral leader. I don't even think they do 50 in Spanish. They just go five yeah, they six. Do. No. No, no. I will you Google that shit. That'll be a little <laughs> that'll be a little post edit right there. We'll be fixing that problem. Okay. Uh so anyway, we uh survived the bird murdering day and uh did you have everybody in town? We were up at Big Lake and we had Oh, that's right. Like we had 38 people there. Ugh. Plus How big a bird? Oh, there was two of them. So, and a ham. We had 18, and we ripped a 32-pound turkey. Gone. How dumb is that? Pretty dumb. It bent my, my rack in my in my oven. No, it did not. Yes. Like, why do we got to have a 31-pound turkey? Right. It's all dry And you had out. 18 people? Yeah. It That's all... why you cover it in gravy. Like, every- Oh, my God. We had a gallon and a half of gravy. I mean, we were not short on gravy. Oh, don't you make like the hot turkey sandwich commercial thing? That's what I make. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. But I, uh, you know what? I like the ham. I'm pro ham. We had so much good food at the table this year, I was blown away. But here's the deal. Here's yeah. the deal. Let me hear it. And a lot of the people that come to my Thanksgiving listen to this show, and damn it, I'm drawing a hard line. <laughs> we host, so that means everything is um, at my house, my... My equipment, my tools, my everything. Oh, boy. Well, that's true. If you host, yeah, you know. It's your stuff. Right. So everybody comes over. Everybody brings a couple dishes. Everything was great. But I'm making two new rules, and I announced one to the group already. Okay. What's You're not bringing a, a, a store-bought pie into my house ever again. No. You could do that on a Wednesday in July if it's Kowalski's. Right. But if you're coming to a major holiday with a box pie. Like a Target pie? Get out. I, 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 these things were like, come on. That was ridiculous. It was my mother-in-law, and I told her. You did? Yeah. I said, listen, no more of this, okay? Right. She goes, oh, you're making the rules? I said, yeah, my house, my rules, no more of that. So we got that out of the way. Then we finish up, and they're doing dishes. See, here's what happens. You finish up. Myself, I got to go check something out in the basement because I... You know, every once in a while, something goes <laughs> wrong down there. I got to get do down there to <laughs> yeah. make sure that the, that problem isn't the... happening this year. Yeah. So my wife gets right into the sink and she's hammering the dishes out. Everybody's bringing shit to her. Meanwhile, they're packing up the leftovers. Yeah. Nobody's there re- representing my team. On the leftovers. Right. We got a 31 pound turkey and all I got was shit. Really? Yeah, like I got garbage. You know what? I got like the like the gristle of the ham and the gristle of the turkey. Not a drop of gravy. We literally had a gallon and a half of gravy for Thanksgiving, and not one drop left at the old homestead when they left. What's up with that? That's pretty weak. That's horrible. You know what I take? I take some ham home because I make split pea and ham soup. Of course you do. And then I take the turkey carcass home and I make turkey noodle soup. Oh my gosh. The rest of it I don't care about. So... <laughs> <laughs> Although I would be pissed if I was bringing some st- good stuff home oh. and I didn't have gravy. Well, and this turkey was so dry because it was so big. God, it, it, you cut the breast off of it and it took like two people to lift it up. It was a monster. It was like the turkey the from The turkey like Christmas walked itself vacation. in. Walked itself in and said, all right, I'm hopping in the roaster. Whack me. <laughs> they cooked that thing for eight hours. Really? Yes. Well, that was why it got dry. You can't cook hey, anything for I'm eight not in hours. Charge of that shit. But it was one of those things where the bird was so big. It was the first year that I felt comfortable carving it because <laughs> really? it was like you can't you screw, can't it screw up. this up, man. No, no. This is huge, huge meat on that thing. But uh, so anyway, that that was that was my two Thanksgiving Day challenges. Was no leftovers, which I'm okay with because the next day I'll maybe get a, you know eat a little, but then that's it. Right, uh, you know, but uh, the big easy came over for Thanksgiving. 
made homemade cranberry sauce. Oh my goodness. So we got like a 15, I don't know, 10 pound ham, 30 pound turkey. We got so much of everything. And he brings out the cranberry sauce and it's literally like maybe two Dixie cups worth of cranberry <laughs> sauce. <laughs> he really <laughs> rendered her down. I'm like, well, because him and the brother-in-law are working on this gravy and, and I got like literally a hot tub full of gravy <laughs> and we're laughing and everything like portion, like let's, let's manage some portions next year. This is, I mean, it all got eaten and taken home and whatever. I'm sure someone's enjoying leftovers, but there, there was so much leftover. It's like, let's, let's maybe plan out a little better next year. So we're not having so much, I mean, we had mashed potatoes, cheesy potatoes, you know, Just like, come on. Shut come on. Yeah. So I think every family probably, well, okay. Every would be non-inclusive, but I think most families at the end of the night, just look at all the shit left on the table and just go, what? I mean, we got a whole buffet at this place full of heat <sighs> plates with- God, it's a good day though. Full of stuff. You know what I do? Mm. I eat and watch football. Yeah. And just stay out of the way of the craziness. Because we got 38 people plus four much. urns. So, I mean, we got- Four what? Urns. We got 42 people there. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not supposed to, you're not supposed to count them as guests. I bring out the urns of grandma and grandpa and the brother and do you stuff. you give them a little place at the table? I don't put them at the table, but I put them in an area where they can be part of the gig. Okay. A couple <laughs> questions come up here. <laughs> okay. Where are they when they're not at the table? Well. where Where is their non-holiday location? Okay. Well, they've all been <laughs> partially buried. Well, partially? <laughs> yes. What does that mean? So part of the is ashes- Is there anything- The ashes are in the urn, right? Yeah, like- <laughs> Some of them, but not like. So we sat forty two at the table because I got four in the in the urn. So if you if you have partial ashes in the urn, I was probably wrong. So maybe we have a total of forty one, forty and a half people there, because there's only partial urn, partial stuff in the urns, because the rest have been buried at the cemetery. But where do they stay? So when you pull these, okay, yeah, where where are they? Where what? In strategic locations around the. Are they big uh, units, like a big urn? No, they're not big. And you know, where are they seated while we're eating dinner? Just off, not in a corner, you know, in a strategic location where they can be and part of the thing. Anybody talk to them while they're eating? I, I, well, I, I feel more comfortable when grandma and grandpa are in visible range of me and my <sighs> brother. So I feel more comfortable when they're and not even sure who's in the other one. <laughs> I'm not even sure who's Come in the on. other one. Yeah, you got a, you got a, you got a strange, you got a, <laughs> you got a random urn that someone left on your doorstep. I don't know. I don't. I, I'm not sure. It's just always been there, so you bring it out. No, I think it's. I, I, yeah, I don't. Well, <laughs> is there an always. actual pilgrim in the other urn? There might be a pilgrim. You in got the other one urn. of the originals at I your table. We might. Dude, that's tight. <laughs> they don't come to the table because the table's too full. But every year I bring them out. They don't like from where? Is there a locker, a storage, like an urn locker? No, yeah, like but, ones but, in no, but like ones in the a bedroom and ones. So I just bring them out and okay. put them on a shelf that's close to like the a, action. Give them like, a, hey, what up? I say hi to grandma and grandpa. How's and my the brother. season? I don't ask about how's the season. My gosh. But you have to understand, this has been going on at this home for over 80 years. Yeah, I still, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. The don't urn know. the urn thing was my deal. I oh, started I believe bringing the urn that thing out. was your idea. Yeah, you know, that happened many years ago when that started happening. <laughs> I started pulling them out, but they all looked at me weird the first year. Now it's just kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Heck, one of them was out before I even got there, so they're catching on. Maybe it never got put away after uh, Halloween. Did they come out for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not there for Halloween, but it's not a bad idea. Maybe, maybe they celebrated a birthday recently or something, or an anniversary. How did it get out from wherever it was? <laughs> The alleged location. <laughs> right. Well, there's hey, not like... You know, speaking of interesting stories, we're talking as we're churning through a very large pot of gravy, and my brother-in-law is a, a gun enthusiast. Okay. A hunter, if you will. 
But he's telling me, showing me this video. Like in Wisconsin, they have state competitions for tactical gunplay. I don't even know what the <laughs> tactical correct, gunplay. Yeah, what the correct terminology is for. All right. So he's showing me this video. And I think he won. Like, I think he's the Wisconsin state champion. Gunplay? Of gunplay? Tactical gunplay. Gun <laughs> yes. The tactical gunplay. So player. he's showing me the video and there's like, like all these rules, right? He's a rule guy. So rules like, of gunplay. Like you can't, you can't sweep in front of yourself with the gun and you can't have two hands here. And you got to like, like in this uh, course, you're like in a tub and you got to jump up and ch -ch 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 -ch. And then there's one where you got to like blow the kitchen windows open. Whoa, 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 whoa. So they're doing tactical gunplay in a tub. That's how Are it you starts. Sure, it's this like is it's not like, like it's like something a little different. A, yeah. <laughs> Are we talking about the brown same? Chicken, brown cow. Are we no. talking about the same gun? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I think what it is is it's scenario play, and it it puts you in the, like like there's one where you're in like a cab of a car. Yeah, and you got to like shoot yourself out of the car get your you know hand out, yeah, switch get in hands, the gun. get through to the passenger but door he's get like, that guy he, I, think, I think he might be the state champion we might, we might have royalty in the family i want to take him on this is a big honor and now now minnesota is going to have a, a, a tactical team competition for gunplay i guess so you know look for your local uh newsstand to see when that when that event's going to take place it didn't look like there's a lot of money in the in the in the in the tournament development. Uh, Tap, but, hey, you got to start somewhere, right? Right, but they had a whole course. It looked really cool, and I've been watching. And uh, during Sober October, Joe Rogan and uh, Bert and Tom all went to these tactical gun ranges, and it looks pretty cool. Like they're, they're you know, you're not just sitting there shooting at a target. There's like shit jumping out at you, and bad shot, good shot. You know, don't shoot that. Right, it's pretty cool. I like it. So yeah, so we learned that, you know, that was that was kind of interesting to know that we have a uh, champion amongst us because I think that's it for champions. And then I uh, I I was see, I, you know, I've been hitting the face or the social media pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And um, I get up and I, you know, after Thanksgiving, it's okay to put your tree up. <laughs> yeah. And I hop on the social media and I see someone posting a picture. A fucking Grizzly Adams cutting a tree down in his front yard and dragging the bitch into his house. Yeah, I heard about that happening. And I think it was your wife that posted it. <laughs> I think that might be true. What's the story with the tree, Grizzly? Actually, there were two. Man, you tree. There were two tree incidents. So are you running a tree lot out there now? No. So when they planted the trees, they were too close together. So there's there are these beautiful blue spruces and but they're they're, uh, they're some of them are dying because what happens is they get too big and and they start dying off the half of them then they freeze because the ice and stuff gets to yeah, them that's and they a lot die. of detail yeah so I've had a few of them die so I had a tree dude help me figure out what to do and which ones to oh, you cut have a plan yeah to oh. to make it so they don't all end up dying because there's like thirty it started with thirty five of them in a, an area and some of them started dying. So I'm like, well, what's going on? I don't, and I'm not a, is, what's a so tree guy? Is that like a arborist? I'm not an arborist. You're not an arborist or a, <laughs> mm -mm. what was the one we learned the other day? The shoemaker. Yeah. I'm not a cobbler. Cobbler. You're not a cobbler or, or an, an arborist. arborist. Right. So we are going to go get a tree and I said, oh snap, we still have uh, two we have to get rid of. Have so you we'll done do this before? Yeah. <laughs> I have. Knuckle so, dragger. So I walked out and, and we just looked and I said, which one? And Did you Griswold it with the chainsaw yeah. coming out of the garage? No. Did you have I, the hockey mask no, on? No, I didn't put the hockey mask on. <laughs> and I didn't, you know, no. There has to be video somewhere. There was video on the interweb that the wife I know, posted like, of me cutting it down. Oh, there was? I just saw yeah. it getting rammed into the house. No, there's a whole thing she did for oh, cutting a whole it down segment? and me. Yeah, but this tree was huge. It was like 30 some feet tall. Oh. But the whole bottom half was pretty much dead, and then the one side on the oh. back was We're dead. We're going to link that on the socials. So I cut it. And you only used the top half? Yeah, like 15 feet of it. How? You got room for a 15-foot tree in your house? Yeah, and that you walk in and then the... Jeez. Wow. It's not that impressive, actually. <laughs> 
So you spent all the money on the house. You can't, can't buy a tree. We got to get our own. Right. <laughs> so then the boy calls me from college. This, <laughs> I need a tree for my dorm. <clears throat> no. So they sent out a text to all the fraternities from his house, yeah. from his fraternity, that they're having a Christmas party. And then they realized they didn't have a tree. Oh, well, and I just no happen to have an extra in the front yard. No one wanted to, <laughs> to pay up for a tree. So he calls me and says, hey, can a few of my guys and me come out and whack a tree? And I'm like, I got one for you. So Bring some white claw. Yeah, so then they came out and whacked a tree. So now all my tree things that are supposed to be gone are gone. So what are and you going to do next year? I'm going to have to buy a tree, but that's fine, because now all my other trees are going to live, flourish, and be happy. Oh, flourish. Flourish, and then flourish, when they die, flourish. you get bugs in them and all sorts of problems, and it's not good for your Dude, other trees. I was I was blown away by the fact that you uh, went Grizzly Adams on it. I, I did. That is just not in my MO. <laughs> that is not happening. Went That's, right out there with the Carhartt all the and everything. Sap and all that shit. Everything sticking. Hey, the really cool thing about cutting your own tree down is you don't have to worry about it drinking. Why? Because the thing is. Fresh. I mean, it still had sap in it, and it, was, it wasn't all the way dead yet. It's got to smell excellent. In it your does. House. It's like the that you walk in and sweet. you just hello it smells like a tree lot when you walk in there. Maybe that's why there's so many sniffling noises on my podcast because you're uh, you've got a you've got a, <laughs> a blue spruce. I know. I'm hang a, over on your nose. Hey, uh, so I'm a sniffler. We've been it, we're 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 into hockey season here. You know. Oh, we are dropping a puck. You know. So the other night we're playing, uh, we played at uh, somewhere. Where the hell was it? So, I, so it was a later uh, game. Yeah. And we're headed back to the house and we realized we hadn't eaten. So I'm like, you know what? We'll call Domino's. You know, we'll pick it up on the way through. Bada bing, bada bang. So I call him up. I'm on hold for a little bit. She answers. I'm like, yeah, I needed to order a couple pizzas to pick up. You know what she said? No. Nope. We're not taking any orders. <laughs> what? Uh, come again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, wait a minute, huh? They were so busy, they couldn't take another order for pizza. Is that unbelievable? Well, so, it's awesome if you own the business, but So you know how I left it? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Just <distract. laughs> What are you going to do? <laughs> we don't have an option to get it from them. We have to... So I went over to the Grumpies and took down a Grumpy, which... Holy hell, that took a long time. Why the does grumpy, it take so long? I don't know, but the Grumpy's Junk Pizza. That's what I had. Oh, but so But I forgot good. to tell him to leave the peppers off. Oh. So I was shooting smoke rings out my arse all night, man. Yeah. It was <laughs> yeah. Jalap- I got home and drank half a bottle of Pepto because I knew what was coming. Yeah, because the jalapenos on there are I pretty strong, had like, too. I actually had like a... And they're not, they're the pickled ones. They're not even the fresh ones. No, but they're still kind of hot. I think I actually had like a, like a meats of pizza hangover. It was really? like, yeah, it was seriously, I felt like shit the next day. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I can't relate it to that pizza, but I'm kind of related to that pizza. Did you run wild when it became okay for you to hit restaurants again? No, we really haven't. Good. We really haven't. We really haven't gone to many at all. Good. And boy, have I been disappointed. Like, you know, I dust off a few of the locals and it's like, eh. So, you know, we really haven't. I actually, I probably owe the wife a. Nice dinner out, but mm-hmm. Christmas is coming. <laughs> Get some turkey out of the fridge. So anyway, as long as we're on the hacky topic, the puck dropping topic. Mm-hmm. <sighs> had another tournament in Hopkins. Hopkins, Minnetonka. Oh. So we played in Minnetonka right off the Williston. Yeah. And uh, last time we had a big hockey tournament up in the Brainerd, there was uh, a fight. You know, just fight, you know. In the game? Just, well, just to, just to give you a quick. Uh, or between parents. Just a quick recap. Um, this, uh, two local teams were playing and the one team was down by a goal with like 30 seconds left. Mm-hmm. And uh, the team that was down scored and the place went nuts. But in the time that it went nuts, they didn't hear the whistle, high sticking, no goal. Oh. So then this team is all lined up on the ice. The coaches are talking to the ref. The ref skates over there. There's two refs over there. One of the coaches comes out from nowhere and takes the ref out. Like, I thought he jumped up and punched him, but it was just uh, two hands under the throat. 
took the took the ref out. <laughs> yeah, One of this, the coaches, Dad. Yeah, this is at Breezy Point uh, last year. Oh boy. So you know, then you had cops and all that, whatever. So you know, it, it, whatever. It's hockey. People are hockey. People are different. <laughs> so this year we're at Minnetonka, and lo and behold, there's a team from. Coon Rapids that uh, <clears throat> got some big goons on their team, and uh, we're playing at the Bantam level. Yeah, and they've got kids that are probably my size on their team. Yeah, horrible hockey team, but really coming from the aspect of hitting hard. You know, this is the first year we can check. Yeah, so these big kids are just clocking these little kids because my guy's half the size of a one of these dudes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I mean, and then if you're not very good or skilled, that's what you're doing. You're just turn, out there yeah. hitting people. Well, and so we beat them like eight to nothing. And right at the end, they got a little chippy, but our guys just know better. They just skate away, whatever. So then the next morning we, we get there and we've got, um, I don't know, like a, a nine or 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock game. And they had the eight o'clock game. So they're playing a different team and they're losing seven zip. Your team is? No, no, no. This goon team. Oh, Okay. Losing like seven zip and the parents are getting loud and whatever. And their kids are just getting ugly, like blatant hits, like whatever. So then actually on the Bantam ice with like, uh, it's gone to running time because they're so far behind. So they're at about a minute and a half and a fight breaks out on the ice. Between players. Between players, which is just sad. Right. So the refs break it up and the refs so sick of this team being like that. They just sent them over to the benches and let the time run out. Yeah. So then the game's over. Perfect. And, and the parents are just, ah, oh, they're just squawking, you know, and blah. So I'm like, all right, here we go. Seatbelt on. Click, click. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we're hanging, in, we're hanging in the entryway. And these moms from this team. From Coon Rap. Are just chirping. Rah, 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 rah. Chirping who? The other moms. The other it's moms. It's a cat fight. Yes. So we get into the we get into the entryway because uh, my one buddy's uh, father in law is there and he always likes to be in the in the middle of these tussles. Yeah. So you know <laughs> I didn't even go out there right away, but then someone had come in and they're like, oh, they're still screaming out there." So then I go out and they're like in the entryway of this establishment, like throwing haymakers, and it's like the moms. Yes, it's a Sunday at Bantam Hockey, and the cops are on their way. Because we're throwing hay, the moms are throwing yes. haymakers, and the, and the dads would walk in and grab these, or men would walk in and grab these women, and then you know what you'd get? Don't you fucking touch me! And it's like, oh, <laughs> oh come on. boy. So then, uh, so then it kind of quiets down, and this, and everybody's like, hey, there's kids around here. What is the matter with you? And this one guy comes in, and he's trying to like calm it, but he just comes in with the Effenheimer screaming like face beat red. Like, dude, you're not helping. You're, you're, you know, making yourself even look stupid. Right. So the cops show up and one of these gals is out there talking and she ends up in the back of the squad. Like she's getting ugly with the cop and it's like. It's Over a, a Bantam hockey. Yes. It's a 13 year old hockey game. 14 year olds. Are you serious? Did she take it? Hopefully they took her away. I don't know. I had a hockey game to watch, but it was like, that's two tournaments, two brawls. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, you know, and then, so how do you roll back in to, you know, living in your house after your husband or whoever, your significant other picks you up from the police station on a Sunday and you got to look at your 13 year old and go, good game, huh? I mean, really, that's just sad. It's super but sad. These two teams play each other again in like a week or two. <laughs> Oh, boy. So we're thinking about a road trip. I'm going. Just to see what happens. Um, there's probably going to be security it's there. So Asia, dumb. You know, like Asia security from the concerts and stuff exactly. that you see? Exactly. No Asia guns. security just is tasers. just going to be walking around. But can you even believe that when you're, because you've got two players. Did you ever see that? I can't, no. And I can't believe the coach in a million years would ever let that happen. Well, but you look at this coach. Eh, we well, might then be teaching, he shouldn't be coaching. We might be teaching how to hit during practices. You know, like yeah. he's not, eh. You know, like my coach looks like he could coach an Olympic team. I mean, this guy's like, ooh, <laughs> that's a coach, you know? Yeah. Where this guy looks like, Jesus, dude, were you at the bar on the way here? Like, come on. He's not, you know, not even, he don't even have a Bauer jacket on. I mean, that's a sign. That's a sign right there. <laughs> you don't have any hockey gear on and you're the coach? Come on. Let's get real. So, yeah, that was... Absolute crazy at uh, <laughs> at Bantam Hockey. I I tell you, I, I I'm thankful that our parents are decent and they're not uh, 
kooka birds, you know, because I, I, I don't, I don't even know how you handle that. They, I, I could see people getting pissed, but then it passes. But it seems like more and more of these parents, because every parent thinks their kid's going to be a superstar athlete. Yeah. Where obviously on this particular team in the current phase, there probably aren't going to be any scouts at any of the games coming up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoo. Might want to look at a, a, a lumberjack sport of some sort or something. Well, what? Yeah, I don't know. It was I, really here's sad. Here's what you do. You fire the coach. Get you some get somebody from the board going. to go coach it, even if they don't know how to coach, and teach a little respect to those kids first. That's just it. Now the kids have no respect. Correct. And they have no idea what, you know, and then that's, you know, I, I did um, the announcing for a game basketball last year right there's a team that comes into town and you can go back and find the episodes but there's a team that comes into town and they're not going to stand for the anthem so their coach just keeps them out uh of the gym so only one team is present for the anthem right and then you know they're just shitty during the game you know making gestures and whatever and then uh one game we beat them and they wouldn't shake hands they just left and then the next game uh they won and they're all you know whatever over celebrating and being jackasses and it's just like what kind of a message are you sending to these kids uh you know for, for their future like you can't treat people that way you can't act that way no but on that basketball team you know a few straggling parents uh came in you know they weren't there they didn't come in as a group there was a few that came in and you know they didn't they didn't travel real heavy but the parents were just you know i mean but it just sets the tone I and mean, you wonder why we're in such a crazy society right now because these parents aren't parenting. You know, they're busy being friends to their kid and then they're acting like jackasses whenever they get a chance. And it's, it's embarrassing. Like I, I that is embarrassing. I mean that to get to the, if you're sober and you get to that point, like, holy cow, where you're just having a brawl at a Bantam hockey game. I mean, <laughs> even a brawl at a high school hockey game is ridiculous. A brawl in any way, unless you're protecting yourself, is ridiculous. Exactly. Enough of that Bantam hockey brawling Bantam talk. Brawling. It's ridiculous. Anyway, hey, how is the, uh, we've got, uh, what, girls varsity? Yep. How's the team doing? Good. How's the club? They're doing good. They're they're uh, playing well. Um, the boys are on the road a lot. Yeah, they have been. And the girls are are probably have been playing at home then, right? I think it's probably about fifty fifty at this point. I haven't really. What's the record? Oh boy, six and one maybe. Ooh, big time! Yeah, something even, like that. Even with the questionable coaching, they uh, <laughs> they. Uh, that's too funny. I um, <laughs> I got no. I got nothing for you. On uh, yeah, I am sure. Um, anyway, uh, so girls hockey's doing well. I think boys are uh, uh, average. I don't. I don't know that. They're, I don't know. I, I don't they're know probably they're just taking a little bit of time to ease into it. And, and we don't have out, basketball yet. I don't think so. We're at girls basketball, but that's it. I don't know. I'm announcing for the boys, but uh, not all of them. Right. And uh, I got the number for the guy for the girls, but. Uh, I haven't called him yet. Right. I got to get on that. I got to get on that. But no, it's going well. That's good. That's good. Hey, uh, a few updates. Okay. Looking at bringing some uh, some guests in, like I've said before, but I met with a few people this week for advertising. Yeah. One of them's uh, bigger, you know, a bigger deal, which uh, is going to actually bring a, a different segment to the show, which will be nice. The local brew house is talking about getting involved, which is awesome. I like that. So hopefully that'll head in the right direction, but we, uh, we're we we're, uh, evolving. That's what it is. We're evolving. Looking at uh, advertisers, looking at ag- adding segments to the show. I love it. Which I like because now we can't use music anymore. Got in Aww. trouble for that. Got my hand slapped. You did a little bit. I didn't think we were doing anything wrong, but I guess we is, so whatever. A little bit. We uh we got to look at doing some camera stuff too to get it on the uh, on the YouTube, YouTube for like it's on YouTube now but it's not like live video it's just a still photo. Um, so I'm gonna have to sharpen up. But it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to sharpen <laughs> you up. You can't the wear look. Your jammies anymore. <laughs> no. But uh, you know the one thing that I did notice is that the uh, you know the the Mark Norman shows were really big on YouTube. Yeah. I wonder why that is. It's kind of maybe people maybe search no one that goes way for to YouTube. A show? Oh, oh, I don't know. 
Maybe maybe they're just following <laughs> on YouTube. He's just got YouTube followers. Yeah, that's uh, that's funny. I think uh, yeah. So I think we're gonna work on getting a few more. I'm gonna get some sports people in. Um, see if we could talk a little football because we do have. We get the lion this weekend. I believe it is the lion coming off of the uh, yeah the freaking loss. God, that's horrible. And I got asked to go to that game, and I can't go. I would love to be the able lion. To go. Yeah, is that with Akuna Matata again? Yeah. Hey, a, check this out. Yeah, a boy. When's the last time you've heard of the Gophers and they're trying to figure out what bowl they'll be in, and which we'll know Sunday. Good. And the three teams that you think out of the three teams that will play that one of those teams that they think is where we'll end up are Auburn, Alabama, and Tennessee. Ooh. All New Year's Day bowl games. Those are big day. Those are big games. Can you imagine the Gophers against Alabama? You know, we were... Uh, that would be awesome. We're going to go off the rails here for a different... Well, because, yeah, we're the northern Alabama. Isn't that what they we They roll about? tide, we roll the boat. Yeah. Yeah. That's Somebody's what rolling something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh... Uh, roll and roll. roll. <laughs> I, uh, what about, uh, we're going to do something we don't normally do in that we're going to talk about some non-Minnesota teams. And Let's I want to get it. your prognostication. Since we lost to the Badger, mm-hmm. and the Badger's going to be playing the Buckeye. Mm-hmm. See how I use the Clem Haskin version I all do. the time? I do. Picking up what I'm putting on there, Chet Shoe. And, uh. What do you think? I mean, obviously it sucks that we lost that we didn't get to go to the Big Ten championship game, but is really anybody going to hold a candle to the Buckeye? I mean, no, they're just going to crush the Badger. So, I mean. I think that's accurate. Would we have been able to run with them? No. Probably not. Are the Badger going to be able to run with them? Probably not. No. So how do we stop the Buckeye? That's the question. Like, Like, they've been dominating for quite a while. They got a new coach. I mean, like. Yeah, we just they keep don't getting skip. better. Well. I mean, look at this year. Will there come a time when you think we can compete with them? I do. I, th- I think for sure. I think that if we don't end up jumping coaches at some point within We're the not. next next four years, I think we will compete with the Ohio States. I, I, I just, you know, everybody wanted to win that and get in that championship. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like. Eh. Look, the Gophers are ten and two. That's good. Those are good numbers. They're going to play a New Year's bowl game against Alabama, Auburn, or Tennessee. That that's is most awesome. likely oh, that's gonna what's going to happen. Holy snot! That's most likely what's going to happen. Road One trip? of those three people, or maybe road trip. I don't know. Is the kid going? No. Did he go to any of the games? Yeah. That's super cool. What a year to be a freshman in college when they're right. crushing, crushing on the. The old gridiron. Right. What about your uh, Minnesota Vikings now? We took the loss. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on who we played. <laughs> who Seattle Seahawks. Ah, the Hawks, the Seahawks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some reason I want to say Packer, but. Yeah. So we lost to the Seahawks. They almost came back. Yeah. But it looked kind of ugly. Yeah. A lot of the game was ugly. Yeah. So do you think that your quarterback is earning a paycheck? Do you think he's worth his I need to apologize. In NFL terms. I need to apologize to Kurt for calling him Cuz Nugs for, for a long time here. Why? Like at least a year. You, so? Because he's not like. Nick he's the, are cool. Because here's the deal. Cuz he's Nugs. The, he's not. Oh, see, I can't remember what it is, but I think he's the eighth or ninth highest paid quarterback in the league. Oh, he's probably higher than that. Isn't no, he? I think he's eight or nine. All and right. he's playing right now. He's lead, like he's either leading a category, he's two in a category, or he's three in a category. He's like playing almost better than any other quarterback in the league, minus maybe Russell Wilson, but I haven't looked at the stats. All right, all right. So well, I would say that, yeah, I think he's earning his court, his money, and I think they're going to extend his contract. Well, uh, oh, I'm not happy about that. Well. But. You know, we could always grab Colin Kaepernick. You know, I don't... Piece of shit. Uh, I don't think he's that good. No, he's not. That's why he's not playing. And then you add the dog crap that comes out of his mouth. That's definitely why he's not playing. Um, so you think they'll extend Kurt's contract, but is it just a Minnesota thing, or is it a overpaid professional sports player thing where... I mean, there's always somebody on the Minnesota Vikings... 
or or your, your Timberwolves who throw tantrums. Is that normal? Yeah, it's a little bit of a diva thing. Wide receivers tend to throw tantrums. Is it? Is it? Running backs is a that little a, a, bit. That's not just us. That's not exclusive to the Minnesota. No, corners kind of. But you don't like hear too many linemen tantrums and things like that. Well, no, those are real men. <laughs> <laughs> that guy throwing his helmet the other day. That is throw, a corner. Yeah, throwing a fit. Yep, yep. That is ridiculous. Yep. I don't understand why. I mean, yeah, you, you, they scored on you, okay, Get over it. They've been scoring on him for a while. He mm. needs to step up his game. I don't Wasn't think he, he just hurt? hurt. I think he was just hurt, and then he came back, and then he shit the bed. <sighs> yeah, he's been having a tough time. They smoked him, but that Russell We're Wilson. We're talking about Xavier Rhodes, by the way. That, he's been having a tough time. That uh, 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 that Russell Wilson is hey, – talk about somebody – and I was just talking about this on Bob Sansevier's show. Like, he's just having fun. Yeah. Like, just having fun. Even when it was like – you know, it was never really close, or they were never really behind. But just and they and they had him mic'd up, which probably helps because then you could hear his what he's saying and whatnot. Right. And maybe some of that was show. But I'm telling you, not a bad day at the office. I'm not a fan of Russell Wilson though because he's went to Wisconsin, oh, and I hate that. Why? Because I don't want. I just don't like Wisconsin one I bit. Hate to see other people succeed from Wisconsin, from the competing school. I want the axe. Give me the axe. <laughs> I want the axe back. <laughs> That's too <laughs> That's funny. Exactly right. Next week we uh, we may have a uh, sports uh, guest in to talk a little football. I'm working on two different contacts. Perfect. And uh, they'll be able to sit down and talk a little. X's and O's with you because I'm maybe not as <laughs> savvy in that world as I should be. That'd be great. Because I have fun. I never played. I did. T- I did just talk to the wife about when I did play. Yeah. I was a fourth grader. Yeah. Fourth line. Yeah. My coach had the worst case of halitosis. Oh no. It was raining, cold. I'm on the bench. They finally put me in. I'm out. K Meyer getting a game. K Meyer just walks off the field. <laughs> you did. That was it. Mic drop. I'm out. <laughs> I threw my helmet. I, I pulled a Xavier Rhodes. I slammed my helmet on the ground. I'm like, listen, dog breath. I'm not doing this anymore. I can't put up with this. I got stuff to do. <laughs> I think I, I think what was I? What fourth grade was that? That you're like eight, maybe 10, 12? I don't know. I knew enough, though. I knew enough that this wasn't my future. We're not a football player. There was player. no big skin in my future. Right. So we had to hang it up right away. Went back to the hoops. You know, that, that was my sweet spot. Right. Ho- hoops. And uh, actually, I was in the hoops. And then we got to the age where everybody, you know, started getting the cool Jordans and shit. And my dad bought me some Kmart shit. I'm out. Couldn't not do that. that. No. Not wearing that. No. I'm out. He wanted me to play basketball. I was never... Not my thing. Yeah. I can't run or jump. And I'm certainly not playing in the skips. Hell and Or no. zips or yeah, whatever. What are called. those? Yeah. Just because they're white doesn't mean they're good shoes. Right. Oh, thanks, Dad. Anyway, <laughs> we got to wrap this thing up. Uh, so we are going to be possibly having a guest next week. Going to have some advertisers. Got some new things coming. Um but have uh, anybody has any show ideas? Anybody has any advertisers that want to jump on board? Now's the time. We're getting ready for the holiday season. That nothing, is right. Nothing says happy holidays like a little uh, advertising on the DK Project. Correct. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> 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 Until then, everybody have a great week. We'll check in with you next week. Peace. Take care. That's it. That's the end. That's a wrap. Read the shtick. That's a wrap for today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and tell all your friends. If you'd like to reach out, you can use the studio line at 612-504-6500 or by email, the DK Project Podcast at gmail.com. And of course, there's always social media at the DK Project Podcast. Thanks for tuning in.